Hi! Welcome back to another episode of Audio Show. Thank you for coming back to our channel and for future reference, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Before we begin, please hit that subscribe button down below so that you can stay up to date with all that we are doing and you get alerts for new episodes. So today we're going to be doing a review on one of our favorite author's books, her brand new book that comes out March 12th, and her name is <laughs> Emily Carpenter. Emily! Yay! Yay! You probably heard us talk about her several times because mm -hmm. we've done several episodes about her and her books and how we love her and how we stalk her yes. and everything. Oh, yes, she is our goddess. Mm -hmm. So this is the book, Until, Until the, the Day, Day I, I Die. die. <laughs> so just to let you know, she loves us. She signed it. They probably can't see that, it's probably blurry. Darn it, well she signed it and she said XOXO, that means kisses and hugs. Yes. And we felt it all. Yes, we did. So thank you so much, Emily, for supplying us with this book, Brilliance Audio. We are so, so, so appreciative. Um, oh, it's... And it, it's also, it should be mentioned that it's an audiobook. Oh, yes. And if you do not know our show, we started out reviewing audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And so now we've moved into the print version of books to review them, but we always go back to audiobooks. Yes. We do the audiobook reviews on our podcast, so we actually have released Until the Day I Die in podcast format already last week yes two weeks ago mm -hmm. so you can go and catch that episode on our podcast website so let's talk about the book yes because we have lots to say we have many things to <sighs> say so what did you expect from until the day i die well like all good emily carpenter books it's a psychological thriller mm -hmm. good southern gothic kind of feel to it so i knew pretty early on that that's what i was going to expect from it um, but I didn't know the depth of the story. Yes. Uh, just reading the back cover, it's about a mother and a daughter who suffer a loss and they deal with it differently. And then, uh, the mom kind of has a drinking problem. And so she gets sent off to a remote island where the real effery begins. Yes. This is different for Emily Carpenter because she, she normally takes her books into like, Georgia, Alabama, the southern states. Mm -hmm. And to see her travel to an island with like Mai Tais, yeah. that's different for us. Yeah, we were there. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited to kind of get that new environment. Yeah, Ugh. definitely. And that island is creepy. Oh, super creepy. I mean, there's murder, there's death, there's mystery. I guess murder and death are the same thing, but um, there's a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Basically. That can be a lot of things. <laughs> so what did you expect going into the book? I expected creepy. Mm -hmm. I expected, for some reason, I th I thought someone was going to get lost in an, on an island. That's what I thought. And I imagined there was going to be this, this grand escape and they were going to be running from people who captured them. Yeah. And I had no idea that it was going to be more than that. Mm -hmm. Because that was only like a third of the book. Yeah. The other parts were huge and just still exciting, but it didn't even take place on the island. No, it didn't. The other parts of the book took place uh, at Shori's school. Shori is the daughter, Erin is the mother. Um, they took place at college. So you really got a taste of this two different times, a young adult and then also an adult mm -hmm. dealing, dealing with this grief. And that was always the underlying thing is grief and yes. how people cope with it. Yes. Um, and you also had this like technological warfare kind of thing. Like, yes, some some spy espionage yeah. kind of situation. It was interesting and it was not something that I expected from Emily's writing because mm -hmm. most of the other things have dealt with mental health. Um, they've dealt with drug use. Mm -hmm. And this dealt with technology in kind of using it as a weapon, weaponizing mm -hmm. technology in a certain way. Yeah. Not, not like for terrorist organizations, no. which is like money laundering. Mm -hmm. Like financial espionage. Yeah. And so it was really interesting to see. And we can't wait to interview Emily, which is happening today. Ah! <laughs> and talk to her about how she researches and what she looks for in her books and how she does everything. So that will be super interesting and we cannot wait to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And I'm most excited because Emily has this ability to take one different 
thing about the world and create a story about it. Mm -hmm. And her characters are so complex and interesting. Mm -hmm. And this book did not disappoint. No, it did not. It, I think, exceeded our expectations mm -hmm. because we were thinking that it would just be she gets lost on a remote island just by accident. We didn't expect this twist and turn of this diabolical scheme yes. that was going into the island resort. I would end up on this island. I want to go to this island. I want to go to this island and I want to watch people die. Yes. <laughs> I just want to I, I just want to people watch on this island. Yeah. This island is called Hidden Sands. Yes. So if you hear a, us talk about Hidden Sands on our Twitter or even in, in our interview with Emily, we're yeah. talking about this island. Yes. Doesn't this island look so pretty even it with looks, a storm? Even with a storm coming. You know those tropical storms only last like five minutes and then it's beautiful sun. Exactly. For most of the day until mm -hmm. the next tropical yep. storm. Don't get rain in my Mai Tai. <laughs> no. Cover it up. Yes. Or have it in a can. Mai Tai's in a can. Oh my God. Is that a thing? Don't take our idea. No. We have our eye on you. People keep taking our ideas. Don't take this one. <laughs> oh, I don't think they were ever our ideas. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to go to Hidden Sands with Emily. Yeah. And I want her to take us on a tour. Yes. Of all yes, the murder, please. the lawn chairs. Yeah. Where do you think that she vacationed that she got this idea? <sighs> I don't know. Barbados? Is Barbados a real place? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> It just sounds fake. It does, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Moving on. Sorry if you live in Barbados. What were some of the takeaways that you got from the characters? So I really loved Erin, the main character. Mm -hmm. I think she was smart. She figured out what was happening. Yes. Way before we did, I feel mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. um, so I love having a smart character as the main character. Mm -hmm. And she was so complex. You wanted to cheer for her. There were so many secrets that she she had from not only her family, but her friends, everyone around her. Yes. I also really loved the bad people in this book. Yeah. They were so evil. They were so evil. I hated the grandmother. Oh my God. Gigi. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> she just like made me so angry. And I always feel like in Emily's books, there's a character that like you cannot stand. Yes. Like in Burying the Honeysuckle Girls, it was Molly mm -hmm. Robb. Okay, yes. And then in this mm -hmm. one, it was Gigi, and it was just like, Gigi wasn't even a big part. If I were, yes. If <laughs> I your were, hand getting tired? Um, I mean, I've worked out. So the way I imagine Gigi would be Annie Potts mm -hmm. in a leopard mink. Oh. Yeah. Would it be faux? Totally faux. Okay, because good. it's Gigi. Yes. Yeah, yeah, She yeah, only yeah. puts on this persona. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I could see Annie Potts as Gigi. Like, Hands down, there is no other woman to be Gigi. Exactly. Oh, mm. God. Yes. And for some reason, Tessa Farmiga as Shori. <gasps> yeah. I thought you saw Tessa Farmiga. <laughs> no, I just saw like four squirrels <laughs> run out of a tree. <laughs> I was like, where's she at? I was like, that tree is melting. And then the tree continued <laughs> to run across the street. <laughs> uh, that's our window right there. <laughs> but yes, so Tessa Farmiga. Yes. And... I'm not gonna lie, probably her sister, Vera Farmiga, yes. as Aaron. Oh my God. We just cast this movie. We did. We just casted it. We it, totally did. It's perfection. And I mean, do you ever think that it's weird for the Farmiga sisters, did I pronounce that right? Yeah, Farmiga. To be playing like mother and daughter. I mean, there's a huge age there difference. There is a huge age difference. I mean, even though Vera looks real good. Oh, 100%. God, I love her. But, but they, they look so much alike, yes. but just in different generations. Totally. So it works. Exactly. So like, yeah, they could totally play mother and daughter. And mm -hmm. I think they should totally. in this book with yes. Annie Potts as their grandmother. Oh my or, God. At the grandmother. Can we be like extras in this book? Oh my God. Just in the background. We'll be the losers in the... <laughs> In the beach chairs, just like sipping Mai Tais, about to die. Or even my big can of applesauce. Oh, yeah. Out of a straw. Yes, yes, yes. A giant character takeaway that I saw in this book was Aaron's ability to, like you were saying, see things before anybody else. Mm -hmm. So like second chapter, when they're about to send her away, they her board members and her daughter and... Uh, her in-laws have this meeting together and they decide that you're going to go to this restoration island 
called Hidden Sands. She immediately knew that she was getting shipped off. So like this ain't this ain't the truth. Yeah. Oh, this is not my life. Yeah. What are you doing? What yeah. are you up to? Exactly. And she was like, somebody drugged me. That's why I acted out. I was not drunk. I had one glass of wine. I know this happened. And she stuck to that story the entire time. Yes. There was not a moment where she thought, maybe I effed up. Maybe I did something wrong. We've maybe, all had maybe those I'm nights. Here for a reason. No, she stuck to her convictions and she knew that she did nothing wrong. And that's something that I love about Emily's characters. Yes, they're just so strong-willed. Yes, and the female characters always know that they're right, which, you know, sometimes that can be viewed as narcissistic. Uh, but, but the way yes. Emily writes them, you know that they're right too. Yes. Yes. So there good, we go. Good, good, good one. <laughs> I, I knew where you were going. Yeah. You had the right idea. I was just trying to peel it back. Mm-hmm. Mm, get to like, it. Like an onion. Mm-hmm. Yes. We always, we always talk about onions here. We compare a lot of things to onions. We do. Maybe we should try to find a different vegetable. Maybe. You can try it. Maybe. That, we'll workshop. My arm is tired now. Yeah. Okay. I'll Thanks. take it. <laughs> so would you recommend this book? 100%. And you already did. Yes. <laughs> And I've literally, the reason why this episode is late, because it should have came out last week, was because I lent it to a friend, mm -hmm. and Brittany was like, are you ready to record the book? And I'm like, I lent it to a friend. Uh, gotta get it back. Gotta get it back. So, I, so I've already recommended it to someone. Yeah, and it has already been in the hands of somebody else for just 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we got it back, and we uh, are reviewing it now, and so we're very excited to bring Until the Day I Die to your faces. Yes. And hopefully you will pick it up when it comes out on March 12th, mm -hmm. um, because we both will recommend it very highly. Emily Carpenter, even though she sent it to us, and even though Brilliant sent it to us, they still did it with the intention of us giving an honest review, mm -hmm. and that is what we are doing. Yes. I mean, there is, we can't hide that we like a book so much. Mm -hmm. So we can't fake that. No, no, we really can't. We're super <laughs> excited about it. And so if we're super excited about it, it might be a good book. <laughs> yes. And you should be too. Yes. So that about wraps up our review of Until the Day I Die by Emily Carpenter. Again, just for the fourth time, thank you, Emily and Brilliance Audio for sending us this book. It's amazing. And thank you for tuning in to our review of this book as well. Um, we really appreciate it and we hope that you will subscribe down below to our booktube channel and to all of our other social medias. We're pretty active everywhere. Yeah. And if you're a fellow booktuber and you want to connect, we are trying really hard to figure out where that community is. We so want to be friends. We do want to be friends and we are now doing our research on what booktubers to follow and what they do and I feel like I'm talking a lot with my hands and I can't stop. Well, until next time. Bye. Bye.